Don knew little about his family history. They were Germans that came from Russia. His great-grandfathers were the highest officials in the Lutheran Church of Russia. One grandfather was even awarded a medal from the Tsar of Russia. Don's grandparents migrated to Canada when Don's father was five years old. Not long after, the Russian Revolution broke out in 1917, and most of the Russian royal family, that included Don's relatives, were executed. This picture of my mother and father, I think this is taken at City Hall, but that's the only time I saw my parents together. I have hardly any recollection of living with either of my parents. She had 13 children, I don't think she, she brought up any of them, me included. When Don's mother was pregnant with her second set of twins, Don was placed in a children's home due to neglect at two and a half years old. He would be in and out of children's and foster homes throughout his young life, and occasionally raised by his parents. On October 29, 1929, the U.S. stock market crashed. This day would be ever known as Black Tuesday. From there, it quickly spread to almost every country in the world. It was a challenging time to be raised. Don's mother was on welfare, and his father was unemployed like many during this dark time. Don lived in a string of small, dingy, two-room houses on Main Street. His father and mother were seldom around. Don and his sister were made to fend for themselves much of the time. And I recall being locked out of the house so many times, being on the front stairs and waiting for my father. He never seemed to be home, and sometimes we'd be sitting out there two or three hours shivering. We had no uh, discussions or conversation, but never had any connection. I remember the only time I can recall being emotional in my life when I was about 11 years old, and these kids started calling me an orphan. I remember the day the war started in 1939, the Japanese attacked uh, Pearl Harbor on my birthday. My birthday is December 7th, it's called the Day of Infamy. I was only six years old at the time. All the war planes would train out of what they called it Stevens and Field in those days. My thing is to sneak out of the children's home and go to the airport. We had this hobby of collecting all the numbers on the airplanes. In a special mess of congratulation to the fighter command, Mr. Churchill says the results they have obtained give us just confidence in the approaching struggle. These are some of the pilots, Canadians, who are daily hurling Spitfire, Hurricane, or Defiant into the masses of not continue to be sent against us. Hitler hopes to gain the mastery of the air, but so long as the British Empire breeds men like these, it is Britain who will gain and hold the mastery. The fighter command has already performed wonders, and at every alarm it gains fresh glory. Don's mother continued to have babies, although they couldn't afford to feed and shelter the children they already had. Don was bounced from boarding house to boarding house. He arrived at the foster house of Sarah Bale. Sarah was a cold-hearted woman that took in children to supplement her income. Don was there for about a year, until Sarah had a fatal stroke and died as she was doing the laundry. Don was then placed in a temporary foster home for 10 days. That 10 days turned into 15 years after the Roberts family decided to take Don on as a foster son. She had five sons and uh, two were in the military, living in North Kildonan, canoe in the front yard. I loved that canoe, it gave me my first freedom. And then 1950 it flooded and it was down deep, about 10, 12, 15 feet. I'd get in my canoe and I would paddle for miles and I delivered bread and milk to some of the neighbors. Every single day I go, I learn something. I'd see animals and mink and muskrats and beaver in the creek. Every opportunity that I had, I, I wanted to be in that canoe. At school, Don soon discovered his natural ability in sports. He became a first-class swimmer, runner, and hockey player, and was particularly good in baseball. A ball wouldn't get by me like I could catch a ball. I can't even get you anywhere. The sons of Don's foster family that were not enlisted in the military were members of the Kildonan Canoe Club, 
That was the place to be. Don and his foster brothers would go watch the canoe races whenever they could. One of the fastest paddlers at the time was an Olympic paddler by the name of Bill Brigden. He was an Olympic paddler from two years earlier. But this guy in, in Canadian paddling was like a god. No one could beat him. In every race he went in, he won. In 1950, Don joined the canoe club as soon as he turned the required age of 17. Because of Don's insecurities growing up as an orphan, he truly never comprehended his physical ability. As soon as he started winning a few races, that all began to change. And then one day, he met a new friend that would change the course of Don's life forever. When I was uh, 20 years old, Bill Brigden picked me as his partner and said, next year we're going to the Canadian Championships. My first race in my life, I beat three six Olympic paddlers from the 1952 Olympic team. This was 1954. Bill had a great influence on Don's life. He gave Don the confidence he lacked as the pair teamed up to wipe out the competition. I remember the first trophy I won, and God, I thought I had won the world. Don's passion for paddling was evident. He and his new friends at the canoe club would plan paddle routes to some of the most pristine lakes and rivers that Winnipeg had to offer. Don continued to pursue his paddling career over the years and became involved in the 1967 Centennial Canoe Race across Canada. The trip followed the river routes of the old voyageurs. The Winnipeg entry, the canoe the Radisson, and its six-man crew paddled for 104 days to claim first place in the Centennial Trophy. That's Don in the white headband. And that's the queen. If Bill hadn't taken me under his wing and said, we're going to the Canadian Championship next year and you're going to be my partner, then not one thing in my life regarding any of the trips I took never would have happened if you hadn't seen something in me that I didn't even know that I had. Don's always saying that most people don't know what they can really do. And they underestimate themselves. And uh, he's going to be our teacher. He's got to be the best canoeist in the world. Paddling changed my life, and everything that I've done has probably come from that. It sent me off in another, another direction. <laughs>